Observation of the great blue heron reveals a frequent behavior known as extension of the neck, which may occur either vertically or horizontally. In vertical neck extension, the heron extends its neck straight over its torso, elevating the head, which is most common during mating or threat detection of a conspecific, a different bird species, or human. In horizontal neck extension, the heron extends its head and neck straight out across water, nearly parallel to the water's surface, most commonly when foraging. In Arizona, great blue herons often reside in areas that have high-density human populations, which may cause them to modify their behavior patterns. All of the herons I visited took notice of my presence. They rarely avoided me at all. A causal hypothesis is that birds frequently in the company of humans may have a decreased stress response compared to isolated birds. A study by Walker et al. in 2006 examined the relationship between exposure to humans and release of the stress hormone, corticosterone, in penguins, and found the effects of tourist visitation of penguin sites to have a significant impact. This in turn was related to the number of head turns the penguins made which is a behavior often demonstrated by the blue heron when it noticed my approach, followed by straightening of the neck. Great blue herons in this particular site appear to be solitary foragers, although they occasionally group together. A potential developmental explanation of foraging in the heron is the acquisition of behaviors by learning from parents. Slagsvold and Weeby in 2011 cross-fostered the eggs of two species of birds, blue tits and great tits, and they observed that each species adopted the foraging niche and behaviors of the foster parents. This impacted each future generation, which therefore can be extrapolated to the great blue heron, which may also acquire its particular behaviors from its parents. Wood storks share an evolutionary history with the blue heron, as they are both long-legged, waiting foragers. The stork uses a tactile foraging technique, whereas the heron is mainly reliant on visual foraging. When Matsinos et al. in 2012 compared the two techniques, and measured the effect of seasonal fluctuations of rainfall, they found that the heron's foraging success was less sensitive to weather changes. This was likely because herons can select for larger prey while foraging, whereas the stork's success is dependent on population density of prey. Therefore, the evolutionary explanation of neck extension behavior in the great blue heron may be to promote the advantage of visual foraging. There are currently three identified foraging techniques in wading birds, as summarized by Papa Costas et al. in their 2005 study. The first is stand and wait, during which birds straighten their neck quickly to stab at prey. The second is walking slowly, which involves diving into the water. And the third is disturb and chase, a repeated strike pattern. Herons will often use one or a combination of any of these. However, it was found by Papa Costas et al. that herons which moved faster and pecked more often actually had a lower success rate than birds that moved slower potentially because the birds were moving faster to catch prey that was already in the process of escape, whereas slow-moving birds are capturing prey unawares. As neck extension is associated with a slower-moving, foraging behavior, it is likely that the adaptive function of the neck extension behavior is to contribute to a foraging technique that promotes the heron's ability to survive, and therefore, to reproduce.